In Karen Thompson's garden, past meets present. It's a walk through reminders of the life once lived by her husband David's ancestors and her own family, a founder of New Braunfels. She's gathered together the family history, alive through plants she collected from the old homesteads. Her garden also reflects her own history as a gardener. In what was once the children's grassy playground, she designed a botanical kaleidoscope. I guess it was something I just always kind of wanted was to be able to sit back in the yard, have more birds, more uh, toads. I love toads and and butterflies and birds and uh, the carpet grass doesn't lend itself to that. In front, she has kept lawn, in keeping with the neighborhood, but breaks it up with attention grabbers. But in back, once the kids were grown, she discarded grass for walkways that wind through the tropical scene she always wanted. Karen blends wildlife incentives with fragrance, brilliant color, perennial hardiness, and tropical texture. Some of the tropicals head for the greenhouse in cold weather and in summer require extra water. But for Karen, tending her garden is a way to relax after work. My mother always said the, the green thumb comes from holding that thumb on the water hose because that's the secret to growing is watering. Karen's garden chronicles her history from the whimsical stone her husband found to Danny D. Rock, a birthday present boulder for the front yard. Along with its seasonal cultivated flourish, she decorates Danny for each holiday. Chickens are permanent souvenirs of a family road trip. The front yard centerpiece staghorn fern dates from the 60s, when a garden mentor gave her a start from one then on the Capitol grounds. When it got too big to move to a greenhouse, her daughter designed a portable heated version to rig over the hanging basket, possibly the only staghorn left from its days overseeing legislation. Had no idea it would live 40 years and and weigh 400 pounds. Her interest in plants, genealogy, and Texas history started early. From the time I can remember, we would go with my, my mother and my aunt, or two aunts, we would go out to Oakwood Cemetery, that's where my side, the Luck side of the family is. We would, in the summer, we'd go every week to check on the plants, plant new plants, tend to the graves. She got her love of gardening from her mother, who always thought the outside of the house should be as beautiful as inside. When I was little, every time we'd go to a nursery, Howard's or Duggar's or somebody, I would get to buy a plant. And it took me years to learn how to grow shrimp plants and just plain ivy. But once I got the knack of it, then I realized, oh, this is wonderful. Some of her shrimp plants started at John and Nancy Jolly's log cabin in Jollyville. Later, the Thompson family collected them for their garden. With her start from the old Thompson farm, Karen takes it to the next generation. In her homestead search on both sides of the family, Karen wasn't looking for the usual heirlooms. And I would say, uh, well, can I have a start of that plant? Or can I have something out at the barn? And of course they had tons of stuff laying around. Yeah, yeah. For her, the real treasure is through the story they tell about the ancestor she and David never knew.
She got first-hand stories, however, when she and David lived in his grandfather's home, raising their young family while caring for his widowed grandmother, Emma. She's the one that I asked her one day, I said, uh, now, Granny, I really want my Girl Scout troop to make soap. And so I got my yellow tablet and I sat down and I said, well, tell me what we do. And she said, oh, right. The first thing you do is kill the hog. And I said, well, we don't have a hog to kill. She said, well, I don't know how to make soap any other way. Now Emma's home is home to Red Bar Nursery. But to connect today's settlers with their predecessors, Karen's written seven books and taken on another career. I'm the Archive Division Manager for Williamson County, the county clerk, and we are uh, scanning and archiving and digitizing all of the records of Williamson County going back to 1848. She also organized Save Texas Cemeteries to protect and preserve our multicultural heritage through its poignant markers. Two old tombstones rest in her garden, abandoned by vandals, untraceable to the families or cemeteries. Their engraving tells a story from the past, a current symbol of what motivates Karen in her energetic endeavors. So I just loved plants, and I loved history, and I loved cemeteries, and I've just tied it all together. I don't think anybody can plan their future unless they do understand their past, and it helps you to feel like you have a place in this world. You have a place where you are or wherever you will be. You have a place there. In doing school programs, which I've done hundreds, well, I did 700 in several years from Round Rock schools that we kept count of, and so many of the kids is they don't feel their place in this world. They're lost because they don't feel they have a place in this world. And they don't know where they came from, and they don't have a clue where they're going. And I think this, the, the, the cemeteries that just help you understand your ancestors, the, the plants that they grew and that you might still have today, all of this just ties in to where you are today and gives you an idea of, of where you're going in the future. And when I do, I can come out and I can enjoy and I can think about Grandpa Sam over there when I look at something that was his and, and see that, that tininess of, of purpose. It's, it's just important.